Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel where today we'll be looking at birds and how airlines and airports trying to reduce the risks of bird strikes. You've all seen the famous ditching by Sully or the miracle on the Hudson, but what could have prevented that accident? Maybe installing a mesh cover over the engine intake? We'll look at all of that and why is this man walking around with a laser pointer at an airport? Time to scare some birds and let's get started. Yeah, we think we uh, had a uh, bird strike on takeoff. We'd like to come back uh, around and land. No doubt about it, our feathery little friends who we actually have to thank for as we learn from analyzing their wings on how to build our own wings are one of the biggest threats to a moving airplane. So the question arises, how often do planes encounter a bird strike? Now, the ICAO's most recent wildlife strike analysis contains data of almost 100,000 bird strikes from 91 different countries between 2008 and 2015. So 100,000 divided by 2,920 days equals roughly 34 bird strikes every day. Most of these impacts were from birds such as gulls, swallows and pigeons. Now, Sully's famous flight was a result of a double impact with not one but two geese, which only accounted for 2% of strikes in this study. So in other words, the chance of your flight ending up like Sully's is extremely low. Now, even more comforting, out of those 100,000 mentioned bird strikes, 92% of them reported to have not experienced any damage to the plane or the engines. I personally have encountered two to three bird strikes every year, but luckily I'm also among those 92% who haven't suffered any damage by the impact. Now, interesting side note though, bird strikes cause for an annual damage of more than $1 billion. <laughs> now, despite the low chance of hitting animals in the first place, modern engines are designed to cope with major bird strikes. Now, as an example, all engines that are certified for large passenger jets are tested to withstand a bird strike whilst running at full power. Engines must prove that they can ingest a bird of four to eight pounds in weight at takeoff power and initial climb speed without catching fire or being impossible to shut down. Plus, need to be able to provide minimum 50% power output for up to 14 minutes or more. Now, this requirement means that even if both engines are hit by large birds, they should be capable of providing a combined thrust output of a single perfect engine, which is more than enough to return to the airport for an emergency landing. This also applies to the windshield, which must remain intact without penetration. Now, after seeing this test video, you might ask, why not just put a cover in front of the engine to stop birds getting sucked in? Yes, it does sound like a good idea at first, but sadly, the drag created would only make the situation worse. Now, a mesh grill would present so much surface area that the turbulent air formed behind the grill would likely starve the engine of the free streaming airflow. The other major risk of a mesh grill is parts breaking off. Now, the impact force of a four pound bird is upward of 350,000 newtons in less than 0.02 seconds. Such a massive impact force would very likely destroy part of the mesh grill and ingest them into the engine as well, causing even more damage. So if a mesh can't protect the engines, what can we do to prevent the birds from causing trouble to an aircraft? Now, separate research carried out in 2011 by Purdue University in Indiana suggested birds were more likely to collide with aircraft painted in darker airline liveries. Now, the study found that the brighter fuselages suffered fewer strikes and suggested this may be a result of the increased contrast between the aircraft and the sky, which enhanced detection and avoidance behavior by the birds. Another strategy may be those famous spinner patterns inside the engine. Now, in 1986, Japan's ANA found that painting eyes on its jet engine spinners could frighten away birds and potentially prevent collisions. To test the theory, the carrier commenced a year-long trial during which it applied special markings to 26 of its Boeing 747s and 767s, and the outcome was remarkable. The trial aircraft suffered an average of just one bird strike per engine, while unmodified examples recorded an average of nine in the same period. 
Now, another theory includes the red navigation light on the port or the left-hand side of the aircraft. The steady red light may be an attractor for birds as there is a noticeable higher strike rate on the left-hand side of the aircraft. Whether the light has anything to do with this is yet unproven, but may hold some insights in the future. Now, the question is, what can airports do to prevent bird strikes? Now, the location of an airport can be a huge contributor to the amount of bird strike incidents. For example, London City Airport has one of the lowest bird strike statistics compared to Munich Airport. Munich Airport is located in a moor area, perfect habitat for birds compared to London City Airport, surrounded by skyscrapers. Food sources near an airport can also be hazardous. The crash landing of an Ural Airlines Airbus A321 into a cornfield near Moscow was caused by a bird strike that led to a double engine failure. Everyone survived, but Russian media quickly pointed the finger at an illegal rubbish dump on the outskirts of the airfield that attracted a significant number of gulls. So any kind of techniques that makes it unattractive for the birds to habitat is an effective way to encourage birds to seek alternative roosting and feeding grounds. For example, not cutting the grass around airports. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Longer grass makes it unattractive for birds to land on. But you also don't want any exposed thatch layers because that attracts insects, which attracts small birds, which then attracts bigger birds. Now, often airports have emergency water reservoirs for the fire brigade. Now, some airports like Gatwick, for example, installed netting over the pond to yet again make it unattractive or impossible for the birds to land on. Other techniques that imminently scare away or reduce the mitigation of birds have also evolved over time. Pyrotechnics have been used for years as an effective tool for the deterrence of birds. Now, the loud bangs or screams scare birds and will cause them to go airborne. Now, the same effect is established by air cannons or playing recorded predator calls via loudspeakers. The noises trigger the birds and then take off as they fear for their safety. However, as with the case of air cannons, they can become accustomed to the sound alone if not accompanied by a real threat. Now, unbelievable, but yes, drones are also used to scare away birds. It is a unique, remotely controlled robotic bird of prey with the realistic appearance and weight of its living counterpart. Now, the bird drone uses flapping wings as means of lift and propulsion and seems to be very effective. What a cool job to fly a drone all day. <laughs> this one's also pretty awesome. This is Piper, the bird strike prevention dog. His handler drives with his car near a flock of birds and releases Piper, which will scare the birds or in this case, large ducks and geese, which are a real threat to arriving and departing aircraft. And last but not least, the man with the laser pointer. The operator drives around the airport looking for larger birds mingling near the runway. He aims the laser pointer at the bird, which startles them and then they take off. As you see, there are many methods applied to either scare off the birds or making it unattractive for them to habitat near the airport. But there's always that unknown outcome. You either leave them alone as they might have gotten accustomed to large jets sharing their airspace. So rather than startling them and making the situation potentially worse once they are airborne. Or you have to make sure from day one that no bird can land here and frighten them away all the time. But to be fair, wildlife has been around much longer than any airport has. And yes, we are disturbing or penetrating their natural habitat. So this is and always will be a battle between human versus wildlife. We have to admit that all means of preventing bird strikes are just temporary as wildlife adapts to our methods over and over again. Two more videos will follow airplane versus animals and what do you do when you encounter a bird strike? That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And perform a touch and go at my website. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning also about bird strikes. Wishing you all the best. You're Captain Joe.